Welcome back to Star Grooming TV. And the star of our show today is Mary Mary. Quite contrary, I believe. Um, she just finished her championship um, I don't know, two or three weeks ago in Tallahassee. Uh, her breeder is here in Jacksonville, Florida. I've known her for a super duper long time. She's been um, moaning me dogs for well over 10 years. Her name is Lindy Bennett of Toy, Boy, Toy Box Cockers. And uh, all of her dogs are named after nursery rhymes or kids movies and books and things like that. So it's a lot of fun. So this is Mary Mary. And she's super duper sweet. She's very young. So she's a little bit wiggly. So that's going to be fun. Uh, but the goal for today is a show groom on an American Cocker Spaniel. So uh, first I'm going to start out with, I know it seems simple, but there are a lot of people that ask me how to bathe and condition this coat um, and keep it uh, nice and beautiful and prep it for showing or grooming competition. We're going to start with bathing and conditioning um, and I'm also going to start with the carding out of the back coat in the tub, which is something a lot of people don't do and they may not be aware of. If you card out this coat in the tub in preparation for the ring, you can get a lot more hair out that way. Wet and soapy, it stretches. It preserves the coarser top coat and removes more of the undercoat. So I consider that part of my prep work, unless I'm competing. Now if I'm competing, I'm not going to card this coat out in the tub right before the competition. I may do it conditioning the coat every, when I do the bath every week. Um, I may do it um, you know, to help bring in more of the coarse coat, but it's not something I'm going to do right before a grooming competition. That would, I would probably leave it anywhere from four to six weeks, the carding out of the coat um, and not even the detail stuff, just the carding out of the back coat. And I'll show you what I mean by carding when we get to that point. So we're going to go ahead and bathe her and condition her and card out her back coat. I already put some ear cleaner, natural ear cleaner stuff in her ears. It's really important to keep these guys' ears clean and keep their eyes clean because they tend to have a lot of issues with this because they have the big floppy ears. <laughs> so silly. And we are back. So silly. Look at you. So silly. Okay. So I'm not afraid to wash faces with my recirculator or hose or whatever just because with my recirculator the shampoo gets diluted a good bit so I'm not quite as worried about it. I don't believe I've had any kind of an eye ulcer or anything like that since I started using the recirculator. But if you're really concerned about it, you can just put shampoo and water on a washcloth if you want and you can scrub their face like this, cover their eye however you want to do it. If you're if you're new to this and that's how you want to do it, that's fine. Sometimes I do it to get the little lip flues and stuff clean. Um, but in general, I'm not afraid to wash their whole face with my recirculator, but you can do it this way if you want to. But like I said, I'm not afraid of it. I just turn it down a little bit and I go right for it and cover their eyes and they're not super thrilled but I don't get it up their nose like I said I just turn it down a little bit so I can get their whole face wet and then I turn it back up again so I can get good really I know I know she does have one eye that's bothering her a little bit, but we're putting medicine in it. And the trick is get everything really, really clean. That's really, really important. Get everything super clean because this hair is really thick. They're, if they're going to mat a little bit in the week that these guys get on every week, if not more often, it's right up here in between the arms and across the chest where all the movement is, and then back here because all this hair flops all around when they're moving. And that's where, if it's going to get matted, that's where it usually gets matted. That needs to be really, really clean. She's 
a little like, what is going on? Because I don't believe Lindy has a recirculator, so. And it's just kind of like, when the noise started in the tub, she was kind of like, what the heck is that? <laughs> Everything's super duper clean. I even washed the inside of the ear, but I put my whole thing, I, I fold the ear like this, and that closes the ear canal, and then I put my edge of my hand over Show it. Show us one more time. Yep. So what I do is I get all the way up as close to that ear yeah. hole as I can. Perfect. Okay. I let it fall back, and I flip it over, which pretty much closes the ear hole like this. So unless you stick your squirter right in there, you're really not going to get any water in there. But I do that and then I put my the base of my thumb over it. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay, so we're all nice and clean. So the next thing I do is like I was explaining to you guys earlier, I actually do some of my carding, my maintenance carding, or if I was showing this dog and not actually doing, she's gonna jump out the edge because she's not used to it. Let me put this towel down here. Your hand? Nope, I got it. Um, like I said, if, if I was showing this dog, I would definitely do this right before the show because it saves time. Um, and on all of my maintenance baths, I do it. So if I know, you know, when I'm keeping condition on this dog and I know I need to make as much flat, nice um, top coat as possible, this is what I do. And uh, but like I said, if you're doing this for grooming competition, only do it on your maintenance baths up to about four to six weeks before the grooming competition. <clears throat> because you want you want to take out a lot more coat on the back um, and all of that during the grooming competition and not during the bath. So this is a a carding knife. This is a classic. Um, there's all different kinds. Uh, I think this is a fine. I'm not certain. Probably is. Um, but they they come in fine and coarse and you know different different widths between the teeth but this one is well used as you can see um, if you get a brand new one don't just start in on the dog with it you're gonna you need to go outside and and rub it on the concrete or like this on the concrete or I try to do that do this like a sawing motion on an old piece of um, I use the don't even want to look. I use it on the edge of one of my furnishings in here, but it's a piece of ply, ply board, not ply board, two by four. Two by four, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, old piece of two by four or concrete or something. Concrete's a little bit harder on them, um, but you need to dull these teeth because when they're, when they're machined and they come to you, they're sharp. And you don't want to just start in with the dog on that because you're going to scrape up their skin. But this one's like 15 years old, so it's well used. Um, and what I do is I just literally like you're brushing the dog and yes I'm doing it on her crown as well because even though we want it to be a little poofy we want it to lay flat and the more you do this just like hand stripping the more you card out and actually pluck out dead undercoat either with a tool or your fingers or whatever the flatter that coat is going to lay. So that's all dead stuff. And it comes out a lot easier when they're wet and soapy. See that? That's all hair. Um, so you want, you want the back of their neck to be a little bit longer right here between, between the base of the skull and, and um, oh gosh, the word left me now. The withers? The withers, thank you. Between the base of the skull and the withers right on the back of the neck, you want that a little bit longer because you want to elongate the neck and you want to show a good arch of neck. 
So we're going to card it out, but we're going to try not to card it out too much because we don't want to flatten it. And she's only about three weeks out from finishing, so um, her dogs grow lots of coat, but I also don't want to make it so that it, I don't want to take out so much that I um, take away that arch of neck. But this, this will take out a lot of your coat. I'll zoom in on it. That's just one little area. Just across the, uh, across the back. Yeah, just right here. Um, but if you do it wet and soapy, to me it's easier, it's easier on the dog, number one. And number two, it stretches and keeps, I think, more of that top coat. A little dead hair there. And also, if you come down the side a little bit like that, it kind of helps blend into the skirt area. So what we're doing is we're just we're just removing dead undercoat and the same way we would dry but this just is going to make our lives just a wee bit easier kind of going to kind of just do like one good swipe and you're holding your blade flat like this and you're trying to grab the skin in front so you're pulling the skin tight And I find a lot of times if I do this, especially a little bit on the top here, right where it goes down into the skirt, that it helps it blend better. <laughs> Does it feel good? What I'm doing is I'm grabbing her neck from the other side and pulling it tight. You can't see that, that's what I'm doing. Now, there's a lot of breeders and a lot of people that will use a coat king or a, or a rake of some kind um, on this coat. You can do that, but again, if you use a new one, cut and coat. And there's a lot of people that don't like to use them at all. My opinion is, if you do use them, they need to be well worn and dull so you're not cutting coat. And there's a lot of show breeders that use them because they knock down coat really fast and they get them looking good for the day up. But if you're a grooming competitor and you want to keep this coat in really good condition and make less work for yourself in the long run for at the competition, you don't want to use a coat king or a rake or anything like that. You only want to use this carding knife in your thinning shears. And then your thinning shears you want to only use as much as you absolutely have to. Okay, so we've pulled out a whole bunch of dead coat. And now we're gonna wash her again. And maybe get a little bit more. So we're gonna loosen it all up. Now she does have, I've felt she's got some um, matting just getting started, like I said, up in here. 
in between her front legs and in her armpits. So what we're going to do is we're going to rinse her and I'm going to condition her and then before I rinse the conditioner out, I'm going to brush her. And the reason I do that, even though we're going to end up cutting her down for the next video, I'm going to show you the reason that I do that is again, wet, dry, or wet, wet coat stretches. And wet coat with conditioner in it really stretches and then the conditioner protects the coat that you do have to demat a little bit. So that that's going to be the reason that we're going to be doing some of that brushing with the conditioner in because it's going to help preserve that coat. So she's been conditioned and the conditioner is still in. And what I'm doing now is I'm brushing her. She's laying down. Most of Lindy's dogs are trained to lay down because it makes their lives easier. Instead of standing for an hour while they get blow dried, they can lay down. So most of her dogs, even by this age, are trained to lay down. I think Mary's about 16, 18 months. I don't know. Lindy will correct me in the comments, I'm sure, if I'm wrong. But anyway, she's a young lady. And... She trains all her puppies right from the beginning to lay down while they're being brushed. And so as you can see, we're, we are pulling out some dead undercoat, but that's all just going to be dead undercoat. We're not yanking anything. There's, If I find a little knot, I'm just going to pick at it. This is where we did our carding up at the top. That's just dead stuff that's going to come right out. Okay. But most of the time where we find a lot of our matting is underneath here. So she does have a few little tangles. You can hear them. Hear that? That's a little tangle. Gotcha. If it's not tangled, you don't hear that. Okay, matted. Not really matted, but little tangles. Stuff that needs to be worked on, you can hear it not matted. That's one of the big ways you can tell if there's a tangle somewhere. You can hear it. So we found something in here, which is probably, there it is, right there. A little tangly wangly. And this is, um, this is a Chris Christensen pin brush. Um, you don't have to spend that much money if you don't want to on it. Um, there's a lot of other good ones, but the main thing is when you're trying to grow coat is you don't want the little balls on the tips of the tines because the hair wraps around those little balls and it yanks the hair and breaks it. So anything that breaks the hair, you don't want. This one is a little bit stiffer. This is from Groomer's Mall. And so I'm going to use it for just a second because we found that tangle it's a little bit the pins are a little bit stiffer and yes you can demat with conditioner with a pin brush see oh God, can't hear it stop on the other side but you can find little knots and tangles and demat them with a pin brush full on matting mm, not so much but the little tangles and whatnot that occur in that five to seven days between a bath. Um, I believe Erica went and bathed her for me in preparation on Monday, I believe, and today's Friday. So that's five days, and there's a little bit of some tangly stuff just right in here, which is really typical. This is where they seem to mat a lot. And there's some. But you can see the conditioner in there, a little bit of sudsy stuff. That really helps a lot when you're dealing with little tangles and mild to moderate matting. And so what I'll do is I'll finish getting this little bit of tangly stuff out. Such a good girl. Um, and anything else that I find on the back legs, maybe. 
and then I'll rinse her and then we'll blow dry her and there's there's a lot of options for blow drying these guys um, now I know that Lindy because she has multiple dogs she's usually keeping in coat anywhere from two to five I know she tries not to have that many but you know she keeps them in coat while she's showing them and what she does is she bathes one and conditions it or whatever she's doing that day and she puts them in a crate with a whole bunch of fluffy towels and they drip because these guys can drip for a long time and not be dry because they have so much hair so they can drip for a really long time and not get dry and curly or if she's just doing maintenance she's not so picky about getting the hair straight she just doesn't want any knots in there um, the other option, no, 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 stay, Mary, I know, good girl, stay, thank you, good girl, um, the other option is to, uh, what I like to do, if she'll let me, is to force dry a little bit and then take my nozzle off, or in your case, you might have a stand dryer, you can get a stand dryer out and finish straightening the hair with the stand dryer. Um, I've force dried them all the way through and then flat ironed them before. Um, there's there's a whole lot of options and in my opinion there's no real right way or wrong way as long as it comes out all straight and pretty. That's the most important thing. She's tired of laying down. Gonna let her stand up for a minute. And then I'm gonna make her lay down again because she knows she's supposed to. And not let her get away with it. Mama said be stern with her. So if I'm a little stern with her, it's because Mama told me to. Stay. Good girl. Stay. Nope. Stay. You're hearing just some little tanglies. And what that is, is a lot of times the once the coat gets a certain length, it kind of just like our hair, it gets a little tangly on the end. And that's because the ends are starting to break a little bit. Hence the conditioner, which helps. Not right there. Stop. <laughs> She's getting bored. <laughs> He's like, okay, I've had enough. No, we haven't had enough. We have to do this all the way. Stay. Good girl. So, found a little tangle right here. I'm just really, I'm just picking at it real gentle. And there it goes. All gone. Up in this armpit. Nope, oh, there's one right there. Cross the chest on this side, make sure that's all gone. Good girl. And if you just stay firm with them and keep showing them what you want, They'll usually comply, and especially if you get one from from Lindy from Toy Box. If you if you do get interested in this breed, and and you want to have one, they're really really sweet dogs from good breeders, and they they learn rather quickly. Really, what they really want to please you, and so if you just keep showing them what you want by putting them where you want them instead of constantly fussing at them because they really don't understand that. All they hear is wah, wah, wah. Then they generally learn pretty quick. And by the time she's, you know, if she was going to be a special, you know, she would be cooperating more because she would be shown like, you know, every single weekend and this would be a every single weekend occurrence and she would just get used to being with somebody else and just FYI guys I met this dog today 
I've never met her before. She's brand new to me. And this is how sweet she is. This is how Cocker Spaniel is supposed to be. They're supposed to be really, really super sweet and love people and kind of silly and goofy. And like I said, she's, I think she's probably only about 18 months old. Somewhere in that range. And as you can see, she got tired of fighting with me. And I just kept showing her what I wanted, and so she gave up. <laughs> and she said, okay, fine, lady. I'll do what you want. And because they're so well socialized from being shown and everything, they're, like I said, I met this dog today, and all I had, I just, oh, gee, smushed her a little bit. Oh, we can my dad. You can my dad now. And she's my friend. And I brought her home with me. I'm going to keep her here for two or three days with my toy poodles and I'm not even concerned because they're probably more fussy with her than she will be with them so I know Lindy's dogs they're just really nice and I've never had any problem with them I traveled all over with her dogs uh, to grooming competition for several years never had a problem okay so all the little tangles are gone that fast and so now what I'm going to do, and we're, we may not show it, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put her back in the tub and rinse her. So that way there's not a whole bunch of conditioner stuck in her hair. And then we're going to work on the blow drying. I've rinsed out all the conditioner and I was just brushing her a little bit. There's two ways to help this back coat lay flat because that's what you want. You want all this stuff to lay super duper nice and flat. So there's a couple of ways to do that in addition to the hand drying. And one way is if you're really going to get into these dogs and you really enjoy grooming them, you can buy what we call a blanket or a drying blanket. It's a blanket like a horse. It goes over this part of the body and it has straps that go around the side and around the front. And it lays down and it helps absorb the water and dry the coat. And while the coat's drying, it gets stuck flat. And that's uh, what helps flatten all of this this top coat stuff that we want to lay nice and flat. Because these guys, you know, our pet dogs, you know, most of them get clippered and that's fine. But when you're showing them, you don't clipper all of this. And you don't thinning shear it all down really short. You just blend in your clipper lines and such. So we want this stuff to lay really nice and flat. And at one point in time, I almost bought a blanket because I was really going to get into these guys. But, I decided to retire from competition grooming and start teaching. And so, I learned in the meantime, when I didn't have a blanket, to do this. So, what we do is we just get this up as far as we can and as tight as we can. And I put one of these little clips on it. It's just, this is just kind of a little thin towel. And I put the clip on there. Like we talked about before, you can either put them in a crate and let this part dry or you can blanket them and you can start drying their legs and all that stuff while this helps dry the coat and make it lay flat so that's kind of what I do that's my makeshift blanket I try to dry some of this ear hair with my happy hoodie hi sweetie <laughs> so I put this over and that makes this lay flat on the top. And then they get my bigger happy hoodie. And I put that over top of that. And I fold their ears up in there. So we muffle all of the force dryer noise. And we get some of this water out of their big long ears. But it won't absorb so much water by the time we're done that they're dry, dry, and all wrinkly. But we're going to soak up some of that water. And she's not used to that, so she's not one of the dogs that I usually use. But you can see she's being really sweet about it. Yes, she is. <laughs> so, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to lay her down and see if she'll cooperate. Good girl. Stay. Stay, stay, stay. Stay. Okay, so now we've got the back blanketed. And 
we're going to start drying. I like to use my force dryer with the flat nozzle. Um, if she won't tolerate that because she's not used to it, I'm going to take the nozzle off and use my handle to hold it. So we're just going to see. We're going to see how she does first because this is all kind of new for her. I always kind of test these guys out the first couple of times. Usually they're okay. Sometimes they try to jump up, but then I push them back down. So if that's what you see me doing, that's all we're doing. We're trying to learn how to do this. And if it's just too stressful for her, then I'll just take the nozzle off. What I ended up doing is, I ended up force drying her all the way, but I let her stand up. Because she wasn't used to the force dryer, she was happier standing. This is completely force dried, no stand dryer. Um, some people will use a stand dryer, which is the one you see on the wheels over here, and they make them lay down and they stretch dry everything, and that takes forever. Um, and so I, I prefer, I much prefer to HV high velocity dry them. Um, and then you can see there's a little bit of wrinkles in the coat, but you would find that when you did the stand dryer anyway. And then everybody comes back with their flat iron. And, and does the flat iron work anyhow. So personally, I think the stand dryer takes way too long. Um, and I, I think it's a waste of time. So now what we're gonna do is on these little wrinkledy areas, we're gonna come and we're gonna take our flat iron and we're gonna iron out the wrinkles. Try to do this so you guys can see. Just like with people hair. That's all we're doing. Just ironing out the wrinkles. Anything you see that looks a little wrinkly. So it lays nice and flat. Now, she has lost a little bit of coat the last couple of weeks because she came in season. So she's a little bit thin in here, but we're going to try to get this underlined so you guys can see it. Let's try to get that hair as straight as we can. And then for whatever reason, always on the front of the ears right here, this always gets wrinkly. Even if you stand dry, it's always kind of wrinkly. So make sure you run your fingers down and you know where the ear leather is. So you don't get ear leather in there. and straight and shiny and flat. <laughs> they tickle you? Okay, so you can flat iron as much as you like or as little as you like. It's really um, kind of up to you can iron out all this wrinkly stuff because she is a little bit curly when she was wet she was really curly so she does have a little bit of curl to her coat so you can also take a bunch of this get it out of the way and you can flat iron all this stuff, blah, 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 all these layers if you want to. I'm not going to do that today, but that's the process. So that way you can see how we do it. Come on, baby. That's good. I'm going to turn this way. Oops, you're stuck. Turn around. There we go. Good girl. I'm going to move her down a little bit. She wants to face that direction anyway. Oh, oh look okay. this way. Yeah. Okay, so... I did a little bit better. Okay, a little bit of wrinkles here. I 
And again, if you're getting ready for a show or a grooming competition, you're going to flat iron all of this stuff. Don't make the mistake of trying to do it all in the ring while you're getting ready to do your grooming competition. Try to get as much of it done before you get there as you can. Yes, for grooming competition, don't leave this until you're in the ring getting ready to start. Do it all beforehand. Okay, so flat iron everything beforehand. Yeah, and then you can always take it with you and touch it back up when you get in there. But I definitely don't suggest that you try to do all this in the ring while you're getting ready unless you go and stand a half hour early, but sometimes that's not even doable because there's still cleaning up from the last class. So now if you're just showing this dog, yeah, you can do this ringside if you want to. You can flat iron all you want. You can do all that nonsense. But if you're doing this for grooming competition, I highly recommend you try to get it done before you even get to the ring if possible. Okay, folks, so I got that secret tip out of her. However, if you want your own tips out of it, <laughs> you can always come to one of the live classes available oh. <laughs> in Jacksonville, Florida. It is uh, Pet, Pet Grooming Education is the name of the group on Facebook. So you can request to join and then you get invited to all the classes. I wasn't paying attention. What's the name of that again? Pet Grooming Education. It's the name of the Facebook group. If you come to the live class and you're not paying attention, you can always ask again. <laughs> okay. So, that... And then... Trimming the pads off the pads of the feet is everything that I consider prep work. This is the preparation of the show coat on the American Cocker. Can you show us the pad and I'm going to come around in the back side so we mm -hmm. can get a better view. Yep. Oh, holding her leg the wrong way. Okay. okay. So all of this brushing and combing and flat ironing and all of that is what we consider prep work and trimming off the bottom of the pad of the foot because you have to show what the foot looks like before and after so you're just taking this pet the hair off the bottom of the pad and leaving the rest of this and everything in between yes perfect and now when you're doing grooming competition, you can also shave under under the ear here because this is all going to get fuzzy, really fuzzy because you have to do six weeks, four to six weeks, depending upon how much the hair grows. But hygienic wise on a cocker, it is acceptable to shave around the inside of the ear canal. That's part of the hygiene stuff that can be done beforehand. And I think a lot of us, if this really grows a whole lot, a lot of us will shave right in front of the eye, too, to keep it out of their eyeballs. But you can't keep their whole face shaved. You have to show that you know how to do that. So is that enough face growth for competition? Probably not, because she's only three weeks out. But it would make a difference. It would make, I mean, what we're going to do is going to show a difference and show, so you might be able to get away with it, but I wouldn't push it that far. 
Okay. I would do at least four to six weeks on the face and the ears because that way they can see you know where to set your pattern and where your lines all go and all of that kind of stuff. Excuse you. Okay, so that's what I consider the prep work and maintenance on the coat for the show American Congress Radio. And you should be able to take your comb like this all the way through everywhere. Without it catching or pulling? Everywhere. If you can't do that, you've got knots or tangles and whatnot. That's for all you pet people, wow, too. that's a lot of growth. All you pet people, too. If you can't take a comb through your dog, yeah, see it's the little damp. Oh, yeah. Still see the little yeah, rain. I missed a spot. A little dark. I gotta fix it. I'll fix it before the next one. Um, but for all you pet people, if you can't, if you want your cocker to look like this, that's fantastic. But, and, and if you're taking them to a groomer or if you're doing it yourself, if you can't do this and get all the way through, then there's knots. If you can't slide that comb all the way through that hair, all the way down to the skin, that goes for everybody then you've got tangles and knots that are going to turn into mats. Yeah, and that's not. why your groomer says that those have to be shaved out or whatever, because by the time you get them to the groomer, it's a big wad. And yeah. we don't want to hurt your dog. I think this is an inch and a quarter or inch and a half, something like that. But you have to get all the way down to the skin. You're touching. Make sure you're touching the dog everywhere. Otherwise, you're going to get mats, and your dog's going to get matted, and then your groomer's going to shave it, and I don't blame them. And I am a groomer, and I love to see all this hair, but I'm not going to torture the dog. Okay, Aww. so there's that. And now we'll move on to the trimming. I was taught the basics at uh, Pet World over in Mandarin when it was Pet World. And I left there when I had my daughter and decided that after when I was going back to work that I wanted to do my own thing. And then I went and worked for a lady called Joanne. And she had been taught how to, oh my God, force dry dogs. And I was floored. Like we cage dried everything. So I came from dirty cut everything in before you put it in the bathtub and mm -hmm. cage drying Me to too. force dry show grooming. Yes, so yeah. no matter what you've learned in the past, um, there's always room for improvement. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. Um, when I do the demo next weekend in Gainesville, I'm gonna show everybody how to force dry a dog all the way. And most of your show grooming people will have a panic attack because they think everything should be used to stand dryer and you should brush every single little hair. And it's not necessary, but that's what they think because that's what they were taught. And they don't even believe in force dryers. They think like that's like the end of the world and or you just like blow some of the hair, some of the water off and then you go to the stand dryer and it takes forever. You can actually straighten an entire coat with a force dryer. Uh, but people don't believe you. So there's, there's, there's always something you're going to learn that's either incorrect or it doesn't suit the needs of that dog. Um, so when I opened my own place, I was there about two years, and I was hiring a groomer within six months of opening. Um, and then I started going to dog shows, and I went to my first grooming competition in, oh my God, 2002, I think. Uh, it was in Cape Canaveral, which is now Orlando. It was in Cape Canaveral, and there was one division and about five groomers competing. Did they have career well, start then? No. Oh. There was no such thing. How long have they done okay. career start? I, oh. Ooh, I don't know, maybe 10 years? Okay. 10 to 12 years? But there, there was one division, guys, and five grooming competitors. That's how far we've come since 2002. Wow. And tools improved? I mean, your clippers you used were Oster. I like had those. no curved shears. I didn't even know they existed. <laughs> I had electric clippers, though. <laughs> yeah. And no, no, I did not. When did you start no. hand stripping? Uh, I just, I actually started, I didn't start hand stripping until I met... 
uh, Joan, which was that was Snickers' predecessor. Oh um, yeah, so it was like ten years ago. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I think I started hand stripping like about 10 to 12 started. years ago. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Um, I didn't know you stripped cockers. I didn't know you stripped terriers. I didn't, I was never taught any of that. I had no clue. So I went from that to starting to grooming competition. There was no way to teach. There wasn't any such thing then. You went to grooming seminars at grooming competition, and that's where you might possibly learn something. You learn in the ring when you're competing. Yeah. Not at a seminar. No, I, I took yeah. dogs and I competed, and, and I got critiques. Wow. And maybe at the dog show you meet breeders and. Uh, yeah, uh, but a lot of times they don't want anything to do with you when you tell them you're a pet groomer, and I'll tell you why because people have had their show dogs shaved with a ten blade by groomers, and you know they. They get scared. It's getting better now. It's getting a lot better. So don't introduce yourself as a groomer. Just act interested in their dog. Exactly. I tell them I'm interested in the breed and I want to learn how to groom them. 